Hey there everyone, what is going on? Welcome to the video, I hope you've got your top hat back from the dry cleaners and have finished up spit shining your monocle because we're taking a little trip back in time to the Victorian era to explore Janus motorcycles. Wait, was Janus founded in 2011? That can't be right. These motorcycles use bicycle tires for crying out loud. Also, am I even pronouncing it correctly? Janus, J-anus, or is it like a Spanish J, Hannes? Clearly we need to dissect this whole thing a little bit and get to the bottom of what in the heck is going on in Goshen, Indiana. Is this small Midwestern town harboring the world's first known time machine where Janus can move back and forth through millennium stealing design blueprints from Excelsior Motor Co in 1869? Or are Indiana motorcyclists just really into steampunk cosplay? This requires more explanation, so let's talk about Janus motorcycles on today's episode of Rickety Bike Rube Victorian Era Railway Shipping Boom. Yami Noob. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Eurocycle. I'll tell you more about them and why they're our preferred motorcycle dealer later in the video. Let's get into it. Janus Motorcycles was founded in 2011 by Richard Warsham and Devin Beek, two motorcycle enthusiasts hailing from Goshen, Indiana. They were inspired by the simplistic and almost rudimentary vintage bikes of early motorcycle history. And since it is 2023 and a 1991 Ford Taurus is technically vintage at this point, it is important to note that the Janus brand is heavily influenced by very early motorcycles that predate many of the significant milestone bikes that shape the trajectory of the industry. So I'm talking about bikes that predate the Kawasaki Ninja, the Triumph Bonneville, the Harley-Davidson Sportster, and of course the Honda CB750, which are all motorcycles that have really established what we know about sport bikes and cruisers alike. Instead, Janus is influenced by the primitive world of early motorcycling. They sought to revive the craftsmanship and character of these machines in a modern context. Janus Motorcycles took its name from the two-faced Roman god Janus, symbolizing the dual nature of their motorcycles with classic styling and contemporary engineering. Which is kind of interesting, I guess I hadn't thought of that. Janus is kind of like a B-lister compared to the other figures of Greek mythology. They couldn't have named it Oedipus Motorcycles or something, Freud doesn't even have any theories about Janus, who is also known as the god of doors. One aspect of Janus Motorcycles that set them apart from practically every other motorcycle brand is their dedication to traditional craftsmanship. Each motorcycle is built by hand in their Goshen workshop, combining old-timey techniques with modern technology. From the initial design phase to the final assembly, every step is undertaken with a great attention to detail. Before they were making full-sized motorcycles, the two founders owned a company where they built and restored vintage two-stroke mopeds using parts they designed themselves. This interest in small displacement motorized transportation led to the develop of Janus, where they maintained the use of small displacement engines that are more in the background of otherwise highly designed motorcycles. They offer a few different motorcycles varying in displacement and features. Across all models, the frames are made of aircraft grade chromoly steel, resulting in a lightweight structure. The lightweight nature of these bikes is one of the features regularly talked about by Janus themselves. They want these bikes to be the easy to maneuver and manage. Janus uses a variety of engines in their motorcycles, all of which I believe to be Chinese built Honda clones. For certain models, high-end components like Brembo brake calipers are implemented, while other parts are stated to be proprietary technology. Janus really relies on the customizability of these bikes as a selling point, because these bikes are all made to order, purchasers have the freedom to choose from various options, including paint schemes, accessories, and seating configurations. This personalized touch allows riders to feel like they're getting a bike made personally for them. Alright, before we even get into the specific models from Janus and talk a little bit about some of the downsides, I gotta stop you right here and interject. If you want a unique and stylish bike that could exist as a piece of art as much as it does as a motorcycle, there's no need to look any further than Eurocycle. Eurocycle is our preferred dealer partner with a massive inventory of all of your favorite European brands. They sell motorcycles from Triumph, Ducati, Moto Guzzi, and even MV Agusta that can all be purchased from Eurocycle and shipped right to your door wherever you live. That's right, nationwide shipping. Forget about those random one-off made-to-order motorcycles from strange companies and instead take advantage of your Eurocycle's massive inventory of bikes. I get it, you're a special snowflake squid who is too esoteric for a Japanese bike. You're preaching to the choir, I've got my own Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled, Husky 501, and Triumph 675R, not to mention all the giveaway bikes and loaners we've gotten from Eurocycle over the years to help us keep making all the content you love. So head over to Eurocycle in the link down below and check out their inventory and start shopping for your next bike. They have some pretty unbeatable pricing on MV Agusta as well. Alright, now back to the video. The first motorcycle ever made by Janus 
this was the Halcyon 50. This bike was a result of the natural evolution from the owner's moped origin story. The bike was built around a frame that was made in the image of a Norton featherhead from the 1950s. Nestled inside this tubular cradle frame was a 50cc two-stroke engine based off of the Derby Senta, a Spanish company owned by Piaggio, which is the parent company of Aprilia and others. This little engine is almost hard to find when looking at the Halcyon 50, whose frame and stature overshadow the engine almost entirely. This bike had a hardtail frame, so no rear suspension. Instead, it used a Springer seat. Janus claims that aside from the engine and fork, almost every part of the Halcyon 50 was made locally. Janus sold 46 of these motorcycles, which could be astonishing in both a positive or negative way, depending on your perspective. In 2015, the company released two new models, the Halcyon 250 and Phoenix 250 with the former still available to be ordered from Janus today. Each motorcycle is powered by a 229cc single-cylinder Honda clone engine, which, uh, as you know from my Boom BD250 reviews, I don't sing high praises of. Oh my god, this thing is a cheap piece of crap. For the Halcyon 250, the design ethos remained the same, taking many styling cues from motorcycles from the 1920s and 30s, but most everything was revamped. The frame and wheels were redesigned and the drum brakes were replaced with discs. Janus claimed these engines from China were producing 14 horsepower and 12 foot-pounds of torque and capable of reaching speeds of 70 miles per hour. While that seems like a wildly generous approximation, I can't help but visualize the horrific experience of riding a hardtail motorcycle with the equivalent of bicycle tires at 70 miles per hour. In reality, does that sound like something any human being should be doing? Probably not. There are, from what I can tell, electric bicycles with better braking and suspension components than this. The Phoenix 250 was released as the quote-unquote performance model of the 250 Janus platform. This bike was styled in a vintage cafe racer aesthetic with the sculpted tank, solo seat with a rear cowl, and low-slung handlebars. The Phoenix 250 did come with rear dual shocks, which is quite the upgrade from the hardtail frame with the Springer seat. The Halcyon weighs 260 pounds and the Phoenix weighed 265. The Phoenix was not a smashing success Success, as I imagine anyone wanting a slow retro cafe style bike would probably just get a Royal Enfield. Janus only sold 79 units of the Phoenix and it was discontinued. The Halcyon is still offered today and the research I've done shows that it sold a whopping 900 units since 2022. Honestly, pretty impressive. Honda better watch out, there might be a new king in town. In 2023, the Halcyon started at a price of $8,800. Kinda spicy, but remember, these bikes are made to order and modification is encouraged, so depending on options for paint, tires, and other accessories, this bike could very easily cost over 10 grand. 10 grand for 250. Oof. In 2018, Janus released the Griffin 250. This bike replaced the Phoenix in their lineup as the more purpose-built motorcycle, but this time, instead of a cafe racer, the Griffin is styled as a retro scrambler. This bike is using the same air-cooled 229cc Chinese engine as the Halcyon, which, now that I think about it, might be the same power plant as my Boom Venom 250 Chinese bike in the box. Actually, it is. I know that for a fact. As part of the scrambler lifestyle, the Griffin 250 has knobby tires, spoked wheels, a skid plate, and an upswept exhaust. All things considered, I think the Griffin is a much more appealing motorcycle compared to the Halcyon just in terms of appearance. Does that mean it won't rattle to pieces if you reluctantly decide to take it down the tamest of fire roads? It's really hard to say. But if it were to disassemble beneath you, this bike does have a four-year factory warranty, so hopefully the boys at Janus would take care of you. I guess in that case, it would make sense to live in Indiana if you were to own a Janus. The Griffin 250 starts at a price of $9,200 before factory options. Again, hard pill to swallow. The newest motorcycle from Janus is the Halcyon 450, which came out in 2021. This bike, while sharing some similarities to the Halcyon 250 of which it came before it, has many upgrades beyond a larger displacement engine. Of the varying models offered for sale by Janus, the Halcyon 450 comes the closest to making sense to me, at least until I see the price tag. The Halcyon 450 has both front and rear suspension, uses a single mono shock underneath the seat to maintain the style of a hardtail vintage motorcycle, while being far more functionally practical. This bike has a larger engine, another 445cc Chinese clone that retains the same air-cooled ease of use as the smaller bikes. This model is fuel-injected though, which is a significant upgrade from the carburetors and the 250 models. It also has a Brembo brake caliper in the front, which is probably not necessary whatsoever considering this bike has just 30 horsepower, but probably exists to offer more perceived value, as does the digital instrumentation and LCD display. This motorcycle definitely is more substantial in size as well, weighing 360 pounds wet, a full 100 pounds heavy heavier than the 250s. This machine has a starting price of $14,995. No, that was not a typo. The Janus Halcyon 450 starts at 
15 grand. Do you know what you can get for a little less than 15 grand? An MT-10. So at this point, we're probably all thinking the same thing. Why? What is the point of these motorcycles? I think similar to choppers and other strange one-off style of motorcycles, these Janus motorcycles are valued using completely different metrics. Janus even admits it themselves they're intentionally going against the trends of modern motorcycles. Here is a quote from the Janus website, quote, the Halcyon 450 is another entry into an entirely different category of two-wheel travel, lightweight motorcycling. While the entire industry skews towards more features, more weight, more power, more horsepower, they often neuter the spirit of motorcycling, freedom, and power, and connection. I can very faintly connect with the rhetoric presented here. There is a sort of snake-eating-its-tail situation happening in motorcycling where manufacturers have kind of maxed out potential gains by improving internal combustion engines that still meet EPA regulations. Re-releasing a new model leader bike with four more horsepower is kind of asinine. And if there are any significant performance gains in the upper echelon of motorcycle power, then more computer systems need to be in place to make the bike actually usable to ride. And other styles of motorcycles less focused on performance like sport touring or ADV bikes just get slapped with every creature comfort imaginable in order to add value to stay competitive. I'm able to recognize that, and at the end of the day, motorcycle manufacturers are just trying to sell as many bikes as possible, and that motorcycles, not unlike like toilet paper or dish soap are also not free of the illusion of choice. But despite recognizing the source of their disillusionment, a company like Janus that operates on such a microscopic scale is not going to have any tangible impact on the motorcycle industry by selling a motorcycle with an air-cooled Chinese engine and a BMX bike frame for $15,000. These motorcycles and this brand exist as a physical representation of an ethos not unlike a derivative art piece. Janus is building bikes based on an idea and then just markets them as this big paradigm shift, when in reality the owners of Janus probably just like building bikes and are highly limited in what they're capable of in regards to resources, funding, and equipment. Despite marketing themselves as having a vendetta against the modern motorcycle, they probably couldn't produce a truly modern motorcycle even if they wanted to. So they've kind of reverse engineered this brand identity as self-righteous minimalists, and clearly there are people of which this ethos represents and resonates with, but Janus having sold at least a few thousand motorcycles over the last decade. But I'm not sure that Janus exists more than an exercise in novelty motorcycle branding. The Venn diagram of people with enough cash to justify purchasing an ill-equipped motorcycle and also attracted to the quirky aesthetic choices and brand rhetoric has to be incredibly small, especially when you consider that there are so many bikes that accomplish the same thing Janus is attempting to do, but better. There are smaller, low-maintenance bikes for urban commuting that are inexpensive, reliable, and having massive systems of dealer with aftermarket support, and they still look cool and retro, like the Royal Enfield Classic 350 or even a Honda CRF 300L, both of which cost nearly half as much as even a Halcyon 250. Also, marketing your motorcycles as being a positive of not having modern features and amenities is a little silly. We've made progress as motorcyclists, and we've made improvements on motorcycles so that they are safer, better, and overall more fun to ride. It's really not fun to ride a bike with the Springer seat and bicycle tires. It could be kind of quirky and novel for the first 10 miles, but then you're going to want real tires, real suspension, and a real motorcycle. It's going to be an L for me on Janus. I can appreciate that anything that is well made by an impassioned person, I think that's great. And if there are people who want to buy a bike hand built by an Amish guy in Indiana, that's their right to pursue. But considering there are so many inexpensive and value driven motorcycles that can satisfy many of the same points presented by Janus, I don't really see a world where their bikes make much sense for riders beyond collectors with a predilection for bespoke hand built goods. Like I said, if you're somehow interested in a Janus, just look at a Royal Enfield. It's like the same thing pretty much, and it's a way better bike. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. What do you think of Janus? Was I too harsh? Do I need to take a horse and buggy up to Indiana to see what the hype is like firsthand? Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Please take a second to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to Eurocycle for sponsoring today's video, and I'll catch you guys later. Fact. There is a species of jellyfish known as Turiptosis dorini, or the immortal jellyfish. This species has the ability to revert back to its earliest stage of life after reaching adulthood. When faced with threats or environmental stress, instead of dying like most organisms, it can transform its cells back to its earliest form and start its life cycle anew. Goodbye. Well, look at you. You've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. 
Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know, maybe leave me a comment down below about how you much you hated it as well too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.